What does successful diversity in the workplace look like? Well, there's some local businesses already doing this, and I got to sit down and chat with a few of these community champions. I think you'll enjoy hearing and seeing what actually makes them inclusive workplace champions. Hi, I'm Tony McNeil, and I'm at Ansco Foods, Seafield Road, Ashburton. Ansco are a multinational food processing company and they've been exporting their product worldwide for nearly 25 years. We're in the Ashburton district and we're showcasing welcoming and inclusive workplaces. Today we're lucky enough to be talking to Peter Hislop who's going to take us through all the diversity that is Ansco. Let's go. Hi Peter. Hey Tony, welcome to Ansco. Thank you, thanks for having us. Hi, Hello. Hello. <laughs> Good, thank you. Come Come on in. So Peter, thanks so much for having us here today. So my first question, Ansco, tell us a bit about the background. Uh, Ansco started in 96. The company started with a lamb and beef operation um, and it's steadily grown uh, to now the uh, stage where we employ almost a thousand people on site. Ansco is a group, is the total group, employ about 3,000 people worldwide, processing beef and lamb for the world market. Uh, top end, high quality produce. Um, a little bit of that is having the right people doing with the right skill base, doing the right job. And Ansco House, the five pillars of the Ansco House, the first pillar is people. So our investment or our, our main focus is getting the people, the right people for the job as opposed to the first bloke through the gate and then giving them the skills to grow. We've got a very good retention of staff. We now have probably a, a huge part of our workforce spread right through all departments and um, all levels of um, Pacific Islanders, and uh, we're at a stage now where we're getting second generation, um, those children from our first, from our first trips into the islands, um, and I find that very, very rewarding. Can I ask, obviously that's from the Samoan Quota? Yes. Okay, yes. Which, is a, which is a ballot system that we have to recruit out of the islands? It is. We, ha we hold gold status in Samoa okay. for recruitment. So one further question, I'm thinking a thousand staff, and you know you've, you've got Pacifica workers, so Tell me about the other parts of the equation. And so we have Romanians, Filipinos, South Africans, um, and of course all Kiwis from all walks of life. So uh, yeah, very rewarding. And it's it's probably given us, the diversity has helped, and I think it's it's also helped in people's personal lives. You know, their children going to, going to uh, school, growing up in school with um, people from all walks of life, not only, but all parts of the world and I think that's been very enlightening for our workforce. Um, they work very, very well together, and I think they actually have a pride in working here. How does that happen? How does it enhance when you've got people from different backgrounds? Probably meeting people they wouldn't normally uh, in other jobs, smaller, perhaps smaller work environments and that. Um, you tend to stick within your little groups, so I think it's been very, very good. They w work and make friends with the guys they work with and then meet their families at social events, and you know it just flows on from there. So a lot of personal growth as well, and that's, that's for everyone. Everybody who comes here has the ability or the chance, opportunity, to become a, a grade butcher. Correct, so everybody that joins the company goes through the, uh, gets unit standards, and then the ITO program, um, where they'll initially start with just the basics, and it builds their skill base up, and you can go right up to level five, which is, um, the, you know, as it works, progresses through, um, the, the easier or the basic jobs through to the boning, trimming and continues right up to equivalent to a shop butcher and that, that's recognised all over the world so if the guys ever want to travel um, this, you know, it's just a matter of popping on the computer, popping in your ID number and here's all your qualifications ready to go. Giving them as much information when they come, um, you know, people need to know that they're working in a safe work environment, um, huge health and safety conscious on site. Uh, we have the Home Safe Work Safe program, so it's not just about having people turn up to work, it's making sure they arrive in a good state, a good, state, a good sound state of mind and, and ready to work, and that we make sure we get them home safe. So opportunities for you know staff who show management skills, team leader skills, is there scope yeah, for that? absolutely. Uh, as a company, Insco has always had a policy to um, promote from within, and so it's about identifying those guys and girls that have potential and then progressing them into leading hand roles and further up into supervisory roles 
um, you'll find all the management here um, have come through the different operations but it always all started um, our recently retired site manager um, started as a as a young man on the cooling floor just as a labourer our new site manager Daryl McKenzie um, I worked on the saws with him for probably eight years seven years um, so those guys are all come they all know what's expected and I think that's part of the um, probably an asset to the company knowing having those guys with that skill base who've come through and know what they're actually talking about and so you're not asking someone to do something you don't actually know how to do yourself. ANSCO keeps attracting people and they get down here and they want to keep working for you. What do you think is different about that? Because obviously they've got choice. Oh absolutely and Ashburton has the lowest unemployment in the country which obviously says a little bit about the company that we have people who not only when they get here want to stay. Most of our issues with uh, recruitment evolve around growth. There's always departments coming up, growth, investment in the site, and that's growing people, but I think it's, it's a good fit for people. It's good, a it's good earner, but I think it's more to do with a good work environment. People enjoy coming to work. Um, it's, always, it's always very rewarding walking around. Everybody always says hello. What do you think ANSCO does that's sort of unique to them for that inclusive workplace culture? I think Mercedes and the pastoral care is, is, is probably paramount um, to have someone that they can go to um, and all the information that, that Mercedes will put together um, for those newcomers, schools, um, you know, just, just getting to know the families, if they have young children, uh, what their needs are, even religious needs, um, or all of the, those things that you know, those very personal things that, that families do need. Well Mercedes, you know, your role here, HR manager, just a brief overview of what you do. So Tony, my position is uh, recruitment and employee support. I am in charge of going and pick up them to the airport to pick up the new someone employees, bring them into town, find them where to live, and help them with um, medical services, open their bank accounts, getting their IRD sorted and also um, helping them with all the information I can gather for them for them to settle into town. That's a big job when you're talking about one person coming to work for you but when they bring their, their partner, wife, husband and children I guess you have to care about what the family is doing too. A lot of studies have shown that when someone goes to a new country you have that honeymoon period you know you start everything's new it's exciting then it becomes winter and it gets very cold and sometimes that you can just drop down into a lull and so how do you work out if someone's possibly you know not coping at work or you're picking up some um, productivity issues how do you keep tabs on that we try to keep ourselves very approachable the supervisors the managers myself we try to keep that communication channel open so they can reach to us whenever they feel like they need help. Also through sports, it's very easy for them to get involved in the community, but not only that, they make friends with someone else and they can reach out to them too. So if you had advice for other businesses who were in the same sort of environment, you know, what would be some key takeouts or learnings that they should take away from this conversation? I, I think look at the bigger picture and look down the track a wee bit and invest in your people. Um, it's all very well to buy a new machine, but if you're not investing in the paper, giving them the, the skills they need, uh, then you're just never going to you're never going to grow. Peter, thank you so much for that information. It's you're most incredible. welcome, Tony. Really, most welcome. It. Thank you. Cheers.